Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? Before the Saints hit the field in training camp, I told you there were three primary storylines I was keeping an eye on. One is the most obvious for everyone. It's Derek Carr, right? I mean, you have a new franchise quarterback. You invested a lot of money in Derek Carr to bring him in uh, in year after nine years in Oakland slash Vegas with the Raiders. Is he the guy that's going to help you ascend to a championship level? Carr is the obvious number one that everyone should be talking about. Number two for me is linebacker because I think – you feel like you know who your guys are at every spot. Not to say there can't be surprises and guys that step up and win jobs, but you've got Demario Davis, Pete Werner, and then what? So I think that's a big one. And number three for me, as far as my biggest camp storylines, were Trevor Penning and Peyton Turner. Because you have invested so much draft capital into those two guys and over the last two seasons, gotten so little return. Now, pending obviously an injury, Turner, it's been injury and lack of performance. Let's be honest. That dude has been a healthy scratch in his career. He's played 13 games in two seasons. But for all we like to talk about at times with the Saints about the fact that they're cap hell and, mi and mi mismanaging the cap and all that sort of stuff, really the bottom line is where the Saints have gotten caught is the fact that they've missed. They've missed in the top of the draft. There's no other way to say it. When you go back to 2017 and you draft Lattimore and Ramchick and Marcus Williams and Alvin Kamara and Alex Anzalone and Trey Hendrickson and al Qadim Muhammad, who's still in the league, by the way, like, you drafted a whole bunch of starters. But when you go into 2020 and you draft a Cesar Ruiz, Zach Bond, Adam Troutman, Tommy Stevens, you whiffed on that draft. And you go to 2021, and you took Peyton Turner in round one. That's a whiff so far. Now, you had Pete Werner, who's played, and Paulson Adebo, but the rest of that draft was Ian Book, Landon Young, and Kwan Baker. You know, then last year, you took Alave, who's a hit, Penning, Alante Taylor, DeMarco Jackson, and Jordan Jackson. Now, DeMarco Jackson, Jordan Jackson, you've got nothing, and Alante Taylor's been awesome, but Penning was a first-round pick, and you need him to be a starter. So... More than anything, you need these guys that you invested that draft capital in to be starting players for you and for your organization. So keeping an eye on those two guys in this camp, I, I think it's just it's massive to make sure they stay healthy and they're ready to win jobs. You need Trevor Penning to win the left tackle job. You need Peyton Turner to win the starting right end job opposite Cam Jordan. You need those two things to happen coming out of camp. And... Today, Dennis Allen gave us sort of mixed reviews on both those guys. First, it was not great news for Trevor Penig, uh, if you would. Here was Dennis Allen after practice today. I thought another good practice. You know, we uh, had a few guys that were didn't finish practice today. Uh, Colin Saunders with an illness. Shaq Davis and Keith Kirkwood, just a little heat-related. Trevor Penning missed today with a foot injury. Stay today. I expect he'll be out here tomorrow or the next day, but we'll see. Uh, where he's at tomorrow but overall I, I think still pretty good health the guys are competing out there I thought it was a spirited practice today so I thought it was a step step forward from yesterday tomorrow will be much the same a uh, little bit longer practice tomorrow put on some shells uh, but we're still not in pads yet so that's where we're at okay so if you missed it there in Dennis Allen said Trevor Penning missed practice today with a foot injury one quick follow-up muse from Dennis Allen on um, on the injury it's not related to the previous surgery, um, really minor. Uh, probably more of a precaution to keep him out today. Okay. I'm not going to overreact because it's the second day of camp and the coach is telling you it's minor, probably more of a precaution. I get it. That's great. But, and also, veterans miss camp. Vet like, there are every training camp in the NFL, there are veteran players who – have a they go out there they stretch and then oh they have a a hamstring or a neck or a knee or whatever they need to say just to say they're getting a day off which is fine like veterans get days off it's fine our guy Mike D always says practices for the unskilled veterans get days off in camp I'm cool with it the problem is Trevor Penning ain't a veteran 
He's a second-year player who only played six games as a rookie because he had two different foot injuries. He had turf toe that he suffer, suffered in the preseason, comes back, plays in six games, and misses the rest of the season with a list frank on the other foot. So you have a big 320-pound-plus dude who's a monster, by the way, when he's healthy, but hasn't been healthy. So, yeah, I'm going to be a little more concerned about it. I want to remind you, do you remember – the storylines with Trevor Penning in last year's training camp when he was a rookie. Do you remember? It caused me to go on on a really fun rant, a good rant. Yo, do you remember Trevor Penning got kicked out of practice after he fought three straight days? Do you remember that story? He fought with Peyton Turner and Taco Charlton on a Monday. On Tuesday, he fought with JT Gray and Scott Patchen. And then the third day in a row he fought, he fought with Malcolm Roach. And, and Dennis Allen ran his ass out of practice. He kicked him out of practice. Dude's a monster. He's got a mean streak. I love it. Like, I love the concept of Trevor Penning. But if he ain't on the field, it doesn't matter. So, again, I'm not going to sit here and, like, overreact to it. The coach is saying, and I'll take him at his word, that it's precautionary, probably could have practiced. It's early in camp. Okay. But because of what happened – a year ago with two foot injuries, and now you're telling me the second day at camp he's got a foot injury? Yeah. I'm like, I'm not just going to passively ignore it. So it's worth watching. Now the great news um, is, I mean, I think this is fantastic news actually, is that Peyton Turner was taking reps with the ones today. Here was Dennis Allen on Peyton Turner's day. I think it's a combination of something that he's earned and – we're looking to see who's going to be that guy that's going to line up on the other side of Cam Jordan, you know. And somebody's got to not be given that role. Somebody's got to take that role. And, and uh, look, he's earned the right to get those reps, and now it's what, what do you do with him? He hasn't been given the role, but he's earned the right to get the reps. And actually, if you look at what he did, I mean, he had a run stuff. He had a forced fumble. He forced a throwaway by Jameis Winston. So, Again, there's no pads. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's running around with a helmet, shorts, and a jersey on, but he's being disruptive, and that's what you need to see from, from an end in that role. So, yeah, I think that it, I, I do have reasons for optimism to think that maybe in year three, if his body's right, his mind's right, it's that, that you see that, that learning curve for a young guy who didn't play a ton at Houston and had some injuries, now you know, could play inside and out. Now year three, if he's healthy, this could be the time that he could go boom. So... Um, I'm, I'm optimistic about Peyton Turner more, so I'm happy to see. Because, like, of the two, if you ask me at the start of this camp, who's more likely to win the job, Trevor Penning at left tackle or Peyton Turner at right end? I would have told you Trevor Penning. Uh, he's just a he, – he's a beast. I, I think he could win the left tackle job over Hurst. I, I just haven't seen anything from Turner to suggest that he's good enough to do it. Like, Marcus Davenport flashed. Like, we saw Marcus Davenport be a problem. He just couldn't stay healthy. Turner has been a healthy scratch at times. So if Turner is physically coming along, that's fantastic news. Um, so the two rookies, remember as we started, I told you there were, there were three things in camp. It was Carr, the linebackers, the two rookies. Well, that's the two rookies. The other thing that's really good about Carr is you continue to hear all of the veteran players vouch for him. Like here was Ryan Ramchick after practice on Thursday talking about Carr's command of the huddle. You know, he came in here and I think he's – going to be a great leader um, he's got great leadership skills um, great command of the huddle um, he's got kind of a calm cool collected confident um, swagger to him um, you know so I'm excited I know we're all excited to get the ball rolling here every single veteran that's asked about Derek Carr are, all says some former fashion of the same thing and it's what Ryan Ramchick just said and that's awesome. Like, you have to have a veteran that the team respects and that commands the huddle and the locker room. And Derek Carr has done that very quickly. So that, that is definitely a reason for optimism. And then there's linebacker, the guy who is the unquestioned alpha on the defense and the leader of this team is Demario Davis. And he was asked point blank, who, I, the question I've asked, you've got Demario Davis, you've got Pete Warner, and then who? Well, here was Demario Davis taking a stab at that. We got a good group of guys in the locker room. I know a lot of praise goes to me and Pete, um, but we got some other guys who who've been here and put in a lot of work. Um, Andrew Dye, who's been phenomenal, providing depth for a long time. I think he's entering his fifth season here. Uh, Zach Bond uh, has been phenomenal. 
Uh, we got some young guys who, who haven't hit the field as much, but look very explosive and smart guys and definitely putting in the work. Uh, Nephi, D-Jack. So I think we're in, good, we're in good hands in that room. Got to go prove it. But if the man of God says it, um, I'll fall in line. I'll fall out of duty. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.